What a headshot! What a headshot! How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through my final team selection, final draft, whatever you guys want to call it, for the upcoming game week one of the 2021-2022 season. So hopefully you guys are absolutely pumped for the start of the season. I know that I am a couple of weeks ago, maybe not with all the kind of tinkering, all the draft creation, but as that deadline gets closer and closer by the hour, I can see my excitement just growing. Hopefully you guys are excited as I am and throughout this video I'm going to kind of go over my final talking points including Diego Jota versus Simikas, which kind of options should you guys be going for, which option maybe should you prioritize if you only currently have one Liverpool option and all that good stuff. We're then going to move on to the actual team and then after that I'm going to be running through some transfer thoughts. Now I know game week one hasn't even commenced yet and I'm suddenly thinking about transfers for the opening couple game weeks. I know it might sound crazy but that's just kind of how I play FPL. I love to kind of plan out certain scenarios and that's why I'm going to be taking you guys through some transfer options that I'm thinking about for the opening couple game weeks. This will be the last video of the preseason so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So final team selection, final draft. This won't be the final, final team. As you guys obviously know, we do have a lot of press conferences coming up tomorrow. I wanted the Aston Villa press conference to be today, actually, because that's kind of the press conference that I'm most hyped about. I want to know if an Ollie Watkins is back. I want to know if a Buendia will be back in the starting 11. Will Traore be back? Will Ogazi start? All that uh, kind of selection around the Aston Villa lineup is going to be quite integral to my actual team selection, because as you guys know, I love to go for fixtures in FPL. And there's opening three fixtures for Aston Villa looks simply stupendous so I think that I have to bring in a couple of Aston Villa options and that's going to see me either go with less midfielders more forwards or maybe kind of go for a five in midfield with Buendia if he's back so I was really hoping that that press conference would be today but it is going to be tomorrow so just keep your guys eyes on that and in the deadline stream we'll be going over the final final team as we'll be able to absorb all that news from the press conferences and hopefully maybe even get some early team sheet news so this will be just a reminder for you guys that we are doing a deadline stream an hour before the deadline and I might even have to bring out the suit you know we got to look good for game week one it is deadline day after all so might have to whip out the formal way uh, just to show our FBL team that we're serious about our business so hopefully I see you guys there and that's enough of the reminder so going on to the first talking point and probably the main talking point of this video and it's kind of the reason why I didn't talk about it in yesterday's ultimate guide to game week one it's because I wanted to address it here and for me the decision's going to come down to Diego Jota or Tsimikas from Liverpool and the reason I'm saying this is that I currently own Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mo Salah. Those two aren't going to go anywhere. So now I only have one place for a Liverpool asset. Now I think that both Jota and Simikas will start against Norwich and that's what makes this decision quite hard because I usually do favour the attacker but in a situation when we get a 4.0 million fullback for Liverpool I mean that's just too good to kind of pass up. I mean Simikas is guaranteed to start against Norwich and I think for the opening couple of game weeks he'll be nailed because obviously Robertson is out with that injury. I think probably three Three game weeks is what we're kind of aiming for because after the third game week we do have that international break and Klopp has come out and said that Robertson is aiming to kind of come back after that international break. So I mean three game weeks for Timikas. They do I think face Chelsea in game week three so you probably want to bench him there anyway. So maybe two good game weeks out of the Greek international against Norwich and also against Burnley. Now in both of those games I can see Liverpool kind of keeping clean sheets and I think this comparison probably resolves around if they manage to keep a clean sheet because I think Diego Jota from an attacking point of view if he starts against Norwich, if he starts against Burnley, that's FPL points to me. I think those are great fixtures for the Liverpool attack and that's what makes this kind of debate super Super tough. I think for me though, it just comes down to one thing. And in the past couple of seasons, the seasons I've actually played FPL, we hardly ever get a 4.0 option that actually is going to play for a high caliber team. And I think this might be one of those once in a lifetime opportunities that we get a Liverpool fullback at 4.0 million for some reason. And I think we have to kind of jump on that. I mean, just imagine the feeling that you're going to get if Timekas manages to get a clean sheet and an attacking return versus if Jota maybe scores a goal. I know the feeling will probably still be good, but I think uh, it's just a feeling that you can't describe when your 4.0 option manages to score. Some of us managed to get it when we had Lundstrom uh, two seasons ago when he absolutely banged it. And maybe in these opening two game weeks, Tsimikas could give us a similar feeling. So right now, I think I've kind of narrowed it down. I will be going for Tsimikas. As with Diego Jota, I think I would probably only go from for one or two game weeks as I expect uh, Firmino to come back into that starting 11. And I think Jota will probably find himself on the bench most game weeks. 
What are you guys doing with this decision? Drop it down in the comments below. I've seen quite a few conservative managers are kind of straying away from Tsimikas because it's kind of banking a transfer already. You're going to have to take him out to game week three, game week four. But I think that if you manage to fit him in as your sole 4.0 defender, you should be perfectly fine with that bench rotation to account for him for the entire season. So now going on to the team, as I'm pretty sure all of you guys were highly anticipating. So I've managed to go for a formation changer. I've strayed away from the 3-4-3 and I now have a 3-5-2 formation and the reason for that is I just think when you look at those midfield options there might be slightly better valued options in that midfield department. I kind of have downgraded Tonia to a 4.5 and if I have to start off with the bench that's probably the only thing that I'm slightly worried about. So we start off with Foster, nothing to talk about there. Throughout this draft if I've mentioned them in kind of the team selection two days ago I won't talk about them because I know that you guys have already watched that video hopefully. If you haven't just go on the channel and check it out but starting off with the bench Foster no brainer there. We then go on to Ailing, my personal favorite 4.5 option. He also has gone nowhere from kind of my drafts in the past. I think at 4.5, great value for money there. Although Leeds don't get off to the best start to the season with those fixtures, I still think from a whole season point of view, I'm going to be playing him every once in a while and hopefully he can return some points. The rest of the bench is where I kind of worry. I've got Obafemia from a forward point of view. Now there has been some talks about him maybe moving to the championship. So my recommendation would be just stay on top of that news. And if he does manage to get transferred out, I would uh, take him out immediately or as soon as possible because he's going to absolutely tank in price because he is owned by 12% of the game. The last defender we have is Omar Badmideli from Norwich, the 4.0 defender. And this is kind of the reason that I'm quite worried is that Obafemi won't start, Omar Badmideli won't start. So then I only have kind of one bench option and that's not too great at the start of the season. My recommendation is always to try get two playing bench options. So if push comes to shove and you're starting 11 tanks, then at least you can have those options come off the bench. The defense has a new incorporation here. Not going to talk about Luke Shaw, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Sanchez spoke about them in depth enough in the previous videos but I now have Tsimikas yes we spoke about that debate a little bit earlier on in the video but Tsimikas will find himself in my lineup for at least the opening two game weeks after that I probably will sub him for Ailing because Ailing's game week three fixture I think is against Burnley as well so that's actually quite a good fixture in my opinion for Leeds so in terms of the defense we've got a double up against Norwich with that Liverpool defense and then a double up against Burnley now that Norwich game I spoke about it I just almost have a weird feeling that maybe Norwich will score but I think at 4.0, you've got to go from if Tsimikas doesn't end up returning anything, that's fine. He's 4.0 million, literally no expectations for him to get any points at all. But I think it's just a chance and a risk that we have to take. Going on to the midfield department, this is where we absolutely stack the midfield. I've gone for a lovely five in midfield in this 3-5-2 formation. So starting off with Rafinha, the new incorporation, I kind of had to include him because when you look at the rest of my team, there's a couple of transfers waiting to happen. We have Greenwood, we have Tsimikas, we have some other options in and around the team, a Gundogan, maybe you have to take him out. So I wanted kind of an assured option that for the entire season, I kind of want this option. And that's why Rafinha is in here at 6.5. And when you do look at the fixtures, although United up front, isn't the best in the world they do face Everton game week two Burnley game week three then game week four I think is a little bit tougher but then from game week five onwards they have great fixtures at hand so that's why Rafinha at the start not the worst in the world if you have to go from in kind of a perfect team I would probably go for another option and then uh, bring Rafinha in around game week three because I think that's when the kind of leads fixtures turn a little bit so I'm keeping my eyes firmly on Buendia if he's back to full fitness we'll probably start on the weekend I think I will opt for the new signing from Aston Villa then going on to Gundogan and I want kind of a Man City option just because of that lovely fixture in game week two against Norwich at home where I think it's going to be quite a high scoring game for the blue side of that fixture and that's why I wanted a Man City option. I saw Gundogan play quite well in the last preseason game and that's why I definitely think you'll start the opening fixtures especially because Kevin De Bruyne is out injured at least until after the international break or that's what I've kind of heard uh, from the news sources. So with Gundogan it's kind of a known thing if uh, Kevin De Bruyne is not on the pitch uh, he has a lot more freedom to roam and kind of get more forward and that's why I think for the opening couple of game weeks he could be one of those little gems that we do have. After a really good season last season that's seen him rise in price to 7.5 which is a little bit expensive in my personal opinion but he does come in as one of the cheaper Man City options. Other options I would go for if you guys can afford a Mares he's kind of a no-brainer for me as a Man City option. A Grealish is an interesting one at a kind of 0.5 more than Gundogan 8.0 million. If he plays I mean he's also a great option to go for. I just think that Gundogan is slightly more nailed than Grealish is. 
We then have Salah Fernandez. Don't have to talk about these two essential options at all. And yes, I will be going for Bruno. A couple of people were asking me after that no Bruno draft why I wasn't. But I said at the start, I was always going to go for Bruno. He hasn't left any of my drafts recently. And that's how I kind of doubled up with that United attack with bringing in Mason Greenwood. So with Greenwood, I also think he's kind of guaranteed to start the opening couple of fixtures. Granted, they could maybe play a different formation and then he finds himself on the bench. But I generally think he is a shoe in for those opening fixtures. And those opening fixtures do look quite good. I mean, Leeds, that's kind of a hit or miss for me. Leeds are either super great defensively or super bad. And I mean, United's attack has looked quite good in preseason. So maybe that'll be quite a high scoring game. Then they face Southampton and Southampton have been absolutely depleted of signings. Vestergaard just signed yesterday to Leicester. So I mean, I don't even know if they have a full starting 11 that they can put out. Maybe Obafemi finds himself at that center back position. Maybe this is kind of a 200 IQ move of actually having the forward in my team. But I generally think that game will be quite easy for United. So that's why I'm perfectly fine with kind of having that double up with that United attack as I kind of feel that both these options are nailed in that front line. Then going on to the two forwards, my two essential forwards, Danny Ings, Antonio. These players aren't going anywhere. The only thing I was considering is maybe bringing in an Ollie Watkins to kind of combine with Danny Ings because it's been a rumor that they might both start up front. But right now I couldn't find the budget. But if Watkins is back from injury, I might have to consider that move and go back to that 3-4-3 formation that I do love so much. So now going on to the transfer plan, I'm first going to talk about the Leeds assets. If I don't start off with Rafinha or Harrison, I will definitely be bringing them in around game week four, game week five. I think game week five is the optimum spot to bring those Leeds assets in. But if I do start with them, that's also perfectly fine because Leeds are quite a good side. They're always usually quite an attacking side as well. So it doesn't really matter what fixture they do have. But the one transfer that I am kind of locking in right now is that if I do go for Gundogan, I will heavily be considering taking him out for game week three so that I can bring Harvey Barnes back in for the Norwich fixture. So if you guys did watch the team selection, I had Harvey Barnes in my side and I just don't know why. I might want to see the opening two games for Leicester, actually see if he's nailed in that starting lineup because there's been some recent comments from Rodgers that is maybe making me suspect otherwise. But I think Harvey Barnes is still a great option against Wolves. I just think right now that doesn't make sense for me kind of to have Harvey Barnes, take him to Gundogan for game week two and then take it back to Harvey Barnes for game week three. I think that's too many transfers kind of penciled in. So I'm going to bite the bullet, bring Gundogan in from the start and then I can always take him to Harvey Barnes game week three if maybe a Kevin De Bruyne comes back from that injury a little bit sooner than expected. So this is one of the chances that I am considering as I do like that game week three captaincy of Harvey Barnes against Norwich if he manages to look nailed as I think that that game week three is one of those kind of tough spots to plan for uh, with Liverpool having a tough fixture as well as United against Wolves. But this is basically a wrap of the video guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys for the deadline stream tomorrow. At least hopefully you guys will join me as we'll be wrapping up our final team selection going into that game week one deadline. I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.